Hello, everybody. My name is Adrian Iliasio, and uh, I'm an engineer with the Cisco DevNet team. In this part of the course, I would like to introduce my colleague Vinay Prabhu from the Cisco SD-WAN team. In this part of the course, he will go over the SD-WAN architecture, uh, what the components are, how the V-Edges interact with the vManage, vSmart, and vBond, and how uh, the traffic is flowing between them. So, uh, Vinay, take it over, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So, going back to the previous analogy of routing packets and routed packets. So, where are these packets entering? These packets are still entering these edge devices. Viptela brings a set of hardware appliances as well as software appliances. You could have uh, what we call it as the edge devices. We have the VEDGE 100 series, we have the VEDGE uh, LTE series, the wireless series, we have the VEDGE 1K, 2K. All of these are basically uh, the same edge modules with higher capacity, higher processing power, or a specific function. So these edges are still the ones that are plugged in to the internet. Routing packets still enter these systems. So let's see how these edges propagate this the information for building the routing table to the controller. So imagine the edge device residing over here. This is connected to the LAN. So this is your office network. That's anything in the Viptela world that sits facing the office network is referred to as the LAN. Anything that's facing out into the internet is the WAN. And you're going to hear this more often, the LAN and the WAN. So what happens here is a routing packet, basically all the IP address space that resides in your office network is advertised to the edge device. Say that my office LAN address space is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So this is my office address space. All the hosts belong to this network. This information is propagated on the LAN side of the edge. What did the previous generation of routers do? Propagate this information to the controllers. Now you may ask, how does it propagate this information to the controllers. This information is passed over a secure DTLS or TLS control plane. This, these are just tunnels. We shall discuss about these at some later point. But these are the protocols that form a secure channel between the edge and the controller. Why does this have to be secure? Because it's an open system. We are running it over the internet. The information actually travels inside this tunnel. How is this information actually propagated? Inside these tunnels, we use a protocol called OMP. This is a Viptela proprietary, a proprietary protocol. So you may ask, hey, this protocol is a proprietary protocol that's running over the internet. Are we breaking systems? Are we breaking fundamentals of how the internet is built? And the answer is no. Why is it no? Okay, so let's go back to the previous system. Okay. Where does OMP reside in this system? OMP resides in the communication between the IO and CPU via the switch fabric within this closed system. 
OMP resides here. This protocol need not be an internet standard protocol by any means because the only thing that needs to be standard is communication between two closed systems. This needs to be standard because there are different vendors. So this could be Cisco, this could be Alcatel. This communication has to be standard because you don't know the, if the vendor is going to deploy a Cisco box, Alcatel box, a Juniper box. So the communication that happens between two closed systems has to be standard. The communication that happens within a closed system need not be standard. Nobody cares about how you propagate the information between your I.O. module and your own CPU. Hence, in the Viptela fabric, anything, any communication that happens within your control channel between the I.O. module and CPU module can be non-standard and this is a proprietary protocol and what it gives us is a lot of freedom and ability to adapt really quickly because of this being a non-standard protocol. We can modify this, extend it uh, and mitigate a lot of issues and build out a lot of features because this is completely proprietary. Okay. So let's go over. So as you have noticed, I have not told you the full form of OMP yet. So what is OMP standing for? Overlay Management Protocol. And there is a reason why I have not mentioned this because we have not discussed what the overlay is. So in the Viptela world, in the SD-WAN world, any channel that is formed over the LAN side is called the overlay. Anything that is not used, so the LAN, Anything that is not using a secure channel, a tunnel that is essentially the LAN part of it as well as direct internet access is called the underlay. So how do you remember this? It's really simple. All traditional networks form the underlay. Anything that's actually built by the SD-WAN solution, by Viptela, is the overlay. So what does the overlay actually consist of? It consists of the secure channel that's formed between the edges, the I.O. modules, and the controllers, and the secure channel formed between the I.O. modules as well. So the, the, the communication via uh, between I.O. modules in the previous generation was also via the same switch fabric because multiple line cards are still inserted in the same chassis. So we need to form a secure channel between the edges, the I.O. that is over the internet and we need to form a secure channel between the I.O., the edges with the controllers via the internet. So these channels form the overlay. So OMP or the overlay management protocol is basically a routing protocol that helps you build these secure channels. It tells you where these controllers reside, where these edges reside and how you form these secure channels. Okay. So, the next phase of actually bringing up the overlay. The first question that should come to mind is, 
hey in this closed system the IO module knows where the CPU module is. How does it know it? It resides in the same physical location in a single chassis. So, there is no need for the IO module to discover where the CPU is, where the controller is. It knows where it is by the inherent property of this being part of one system, one switch fabric. That is fundamentally broken in VAN. We have split this open, but since these edge devices reside in a completely different location, they have no idea of knowing where the controllers reside. How does VAN solve this? VAN solves this by bringing in an additional component called an orchestrator. So, what is the orchestrator? The orchestrator is a call home device. It is something that all Viptela components call home to. Okay. So, how do all Viptela components know where this orchestrator resides? This is the one configuration that resides and which is common to all components all edge devices, all controllers, the management plane, all of these have one common address that they will uh, all call home to. And this is the only component in the Viptela solution that has to be in the public space. And I will tell you why at a later instance. So, imagine a control component is spun up first. It calls home to this orchestrator module. It keeps this connection up. Now, the orchestrator is aware of where this control plane module exists in the internet. A edge device comes up. This is your IO module. Imagine you have inserted the IO module into the chassis for the first time. It calls home to this orchestrator as well, the V bond. We call it the V bond. When it registers with the orchestrator, the orchestrator now or has information regarding the location of the controllers. This information is passed to the edge device. Again, using an update here into the edge device. With this new information about the location of the controller, a secure channel is set up by the edge to the controller and an OMP session is set up to exchange the overlay information between the controller and the edge. What is transmitted in this OMP session? All the LAN side routes in, the, in an upward stream and what is transmitted from the controller back into the edge is any other land side route that was propagated to it from some other edge device is now pushed down to this edge. Now, what does it give you? Now, this edge is aware about some other edge in some other location. A secure tunnel can now be formed over the internet between these edge devices. The controller's job is done. This secure channel now can be used to communicate from edge device A to edge device B. Now, you can say, uh, you, you must have heard me say, hey, a secure channel is formed, a secure channel is formed. How is the secure channel formed? Where are these keys fundamentally located? The key server is the controller itself. So, Another component about the Viptela architecture, more than being just SD-WAN, it is also SEN, a secure, extensible 
network. Let us say why this, why being a secure extensible network, being able to exchange keys seamlessly and securely is so important for managing large networks. The same diagram, I have multiple routers. The network admin, it, where is the key server? The key server is every CPU module on every edge device in the traditional network. So the network admin has to actually program each of these CPU modules individually with the keys of all other CPU modules. Now, what do you mean by keys? So for forming a secure channel, uh, just go through the very basics of uh, encryption. You have a public key and a private key. So imagine a set of keys, A and B. Anything locked by A can only be opened by B. That is the fundamental principle of any encryption uh, system. Locked by A can only be opened by B. Vice versa, if I have locked it using key B, I can only open using key A. So I have two keys. I choose one of them to be private that I keep secure only with me and one of them to be public that I can give to any uh, buddy in the internet. So what does this ensure? Anyone in the internet can use key B to encrypt the packet, to lock the packet. Who can open the packet? Only someone who has key A. Who has key A? Only I have key A, hence I am the only one who can actually read the contents of the packet. This key exchange, sending out the public keys of every edge device needs to happen in order to form the secure overlay. So where do these public keys reside? These public key resi uh, keys reside on these controllers. Now you may say, hey, but the, these controllers reside in the internet. What if these controllers get compromised? Legitimate concern. But these controllers need not reside in the internet. If you remember from the previous sketch, the only component of the SD-WAN solution that must reside in the public address space is the orchestrator. The orchestrator has no keys, no information about the routes or anything about the network. All it knows is where these controllers are located. And these controllers could reside in the private address space. The controllers can be secured through proxies, firewalls, and NATs. All the control plane key exchange servers are secure in a private address space, do not actually need to reside in the internet. They are all secured. The only component that is in the public space is the orchestrator. Similarly, the edges could reside, the LAN side can reside in the private address space, and the WAN side can also be secured. by natting it out into the public address space. So at no point are these keys exposed to the internet. So just to summarize what we have covered right now is we have the edge devices which actually see the packets, the routing packets and the routed packets into their physical interfaces. These 
packets are either sent across to other edge devices and which packets would these be? These would be the routed packets or sent to the controllers to form the routing information base and these are the routing packets. So, the table routing table is formed here pushed down to these edges data packet enters these edges the routing table is looked up and the endpoint is determined through the routing table and sent across to the other edge into another network. This seamless routing of the traffic gives the end user a feeling of all of these sites, remote sites fundamentally residing in the same location because these packets any host behind the data center site can communicate with any host behind the remote site. So, it looks like a virtual single LAN segment for the end user like how we perform VPN into our office networks. So, this is essentially what Viptela SD-WAN is. Uh, we will cover details about what these channels are called. These are secure IPsec channels that are formed between the edge devices. These are TLS and DTLS channels. If you will want to read more about these standard protocols, you, you, you should actually uh, go over these standard protocols that are running over the internet today uh, that are formed uh, or used to form the secure overlay bring up of Viptela. So, that is it for me. Hope this brings uh, some light into how the SD-WAN overlay bring up is, what the fundamentals were, why this technology makes sense. And uh, thank you for watching.